Hey yo, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler Reese, aka Tech Killington. Hey yo, man. All right, so this video is going to be a top 15 tips and tricks on sourcing your CEO warehouse crates, all right? Uh, this will work for right now, this week, for double money until the 26th. And anytime that you want to grind crates, this is how I feel my warehouse is up so much faster and how you can do the same thing, all right? First thing, though, you want to have good placement. Place your terabyte outside one of your warehouses so you can quickly access it to source new crates. If you want to, you can put it in between. That's fine. I just like to have it next to one warehouse. That way it's just really quick when I exit the one jump in there and then I source my crates. If you have a, a large warehouse, uh, maybe you have two of them, whatever, and they're far apart from each other, you could also put your terabytes next to your high-end apartment, have a Lester Fleece job or an old school heist set up for your main apartment in the heist room. You can teleport there and then just walk out, go into your terabyte on the ground floor and then run your crates that way as well. All right, the next tip, definitely source three crates at a time. That is mandatory. Three crates is proven. This is a you know tried and, and proven tactic. Always source three crates. It is better that way. Do that and make sure you do that every single time. Now, there'll be some cases where you'll just have to you know finish up, uh, fill it up a warehouse with just one crate. That's fine. No problem. But do that. Make sure it's going to be three crates every single time. All right? That's very important. This one's super easy, but I still find out that some people don't know this. Use Lester. If you have the cops on you, just call Lester. Now, I know some of you are aware with the Diamond Casino Heist where those missions, you cannot call Lester. He does not work. He can't you know, help you get the cops off of you. That is not the case for the CEO warehouse crates. Absolutely use Lester to your advantage. Don't forget that. It makes it so much easier. Uh, also, if you have the cops on you and you die, typically the cops will not be on you when you respawn. So if you just want to kill yourself real fast, that's fine too. Say you just buy a new warehouse or you've had a warehouse for a while. Pay attention to this red toolbox right here. This red toolbox is where you can upgrade your sale vehicles, all right? Your delivery vehicles, the Cuban, the Titan, the, the brigade trucks, the tugboat. You can add armor, bulletproof tires, speed upgrades, things like that. And that is extremely important, okay? Another thing, don't forget, if you have a terabyte out, say your Mark II is far away, simply go into your interaction menu and then request your personal vehicle. And then it will spawn for you inside the terabyte instantly. And that saves you a tremendous amount of time. And when you're running hundreds of crates, that definitely adds up. Let's look at it one more time here. I'm outside the terabyte. I go into my interaction menu, go down to vehicles, request personal vehicle, and then go inside the terabyte. And the Mark II is there. And again, this saves you a lot of time. You can use this tactic or this little tip or trick any time in the game, no matter what. Plus, if you have your Mark II far away from you, just request personal vehicle. If that's the vehicle you've been using, that is your personal vehicle. This is a very helpful trick right here. Uh, if you guys ever get the Trackify mission, which I know you have, it can be a pain in the butt sometimes. Again, I know some of you know this already, but a lot of you guys out there don't. And this will help you save a lot of time. So once you pull your Trackify radar out, the very last red dot to show up is always going to be the target all right so remember move your vehicle and get it lined up correctly just kind of pay attention to it you can't just move the camera it's got to be the vehicle because that's where the actual gps is based off of in the trackify so turn your whole vehicle towards that location and just fly out to it and bam it works every single time and it saves you so much time sourcing that crate all right and it's really important plus with these vehicles you can you know if they're, if they're at a red light or if there's a NPC vehicle in front of them, you can stop the NPC vehicle and then pull these guys out without even a shot fired and just dip on out and you have your crate. And we'll show you that here in just a moment, a few more times. Let's look at the Trackify mission again. This one, it popped up really quick, but it's the red dot on the right side of the radar. You see I line it up and we just fly on out there and we take care of business. No problem at all. I just want to show you guys this in real time so you, you know, Ty, whatever, you're tricking me. You just got to kind of pay attention, you know, because sometimes the dots, you know, they, they spawn up pretty quick. But as long as you keep an eye on it, you know what you're doing, you're fine. Same with the four green crates that will pop up. Sometimes you'll get a source mission and it looks like it's just one crate. You go to it and then bam, multiple crates pop up on your radar and they're flashing, they're blinking. So stop what you're doing, stop moving, watch these blinking crates. 
the crate that stops blinking last is the target. As you see right here, this guy was the last one to uh, stop blinking, and that is going to be the source crate. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's very, very simple, very, very easy. You see I'm flying towards him right now in the Mark II. I'm pulling up. We'll zoom back out. This is the vehicle right here, the Sprunk vehicle. There it is, right? This is the crate. Good to go. And then there's an NPC car in front of him, so I'll just get out of, you know, make the NPC car stop just by parking my Mark II there and then pull this guy out of the vehicle, and it's mine. Simple. There you go. All right, let's look at this one more time here. This is the crate that stopped blinking last, and we're flying down towards him. About to pull up. It's this guy, the uh, the Volkswagen uh, van right here with the surfboard. There it is. Good to go. This will save you so much time. All right, so definitely pay attention to that. And uh, I, I recommend, because there could be a lot of stuff on your radar, on your map or whatever, so just stop moving. That way it's not you know shifting around, and you'll be able to take care of it and knock it out. Again, this is what I was talking about. Anywhere you're at, you need to get your Mark II back. As long as that was the very last vehicle you were using, go to your interaction menu and simply request personal vehicle, and then your Mark II will spawn up for you. It's similar to how it is in the MC business. Again, I know a lot of you guys already know this. Maybe it's a reminder for some of you and for some of the new people out here just getting into you know, running crates or just purchased a Mark II or whatever. This is a great way for you to be able to spawn this in and use this vehicle, all right? Now, when you're sourcing the individual crates, say you get three at a time, and you have to bring it back one at a time or whatever, and you, when you go back to your warehouse, skip the large Corona ring. Land the bike right in front of your main entrance and the door and then go inside. This is the reason why. It's actually much quicker. As you see right here, I'm able to spawn inside and then walk right back out and go on to that second crate. So keep that in mind. If you're having to source those three crates one at a time, this right here will shade about, I don't know, say 10, 15 seconds every single time. And that adds up. You know, when you're doing hundreds of crates, it really adds up. As you see right here, I just pass the large Corona ring, park the bike, then I just go inside of the door right there. I'm showing you this all in real time. Uh, you walk in, you get to go to the animation. It's a much shorter black screen, and then you're able to walk right on out. You get the little icon to exit the door, and then bam. You know, I was so quick on this, I didn't even get the exit to leave <laughs> until a few, uh, about a second or two afterwards. But it's so much quicker than just going in through the larger Corona ring. Just use the large Corona ring for the vehicles that you have to bring back and deliver. I mean, you kind of have to. So. That's really important, and again, that time adds up. Now, say you just have one warehouse, right? A small or a medium or a large. Mix that uh, your mix your crate sourcing with things like Headhunter or Sightseer. Right now, they're double money, but even when they're not, it's great cash, and you pretty much pay for the cost of sourcing your crates. Again, when it's just one vehicle, even if it's a police vehicle. Uh, you know, if they come to a red light or if they're behind a NPC vehicle, you can forcibly stop them by just parking your Mark II or, you know, hijacking them when they're at a red light when they're already stopped and you don't have to worry about anything at all. Okay, that's very, very important to understand that. This is one of the most important things that you guys need to know about the crate business. Now, people ask me all the time, they're like, Ty, can you sell a full warehouse solo, a full large warehouse solo? And I'm telling you right now, yes. You can. This is the most, uh, I guess you could say, problematic sale, the Titan sale or the Cuban planes, right? When you go down here, you'll notice that there is a buzzer. There's always a buzzer by the Titan or possibly by the Cuban. And if you have a Mark II or whatever, you can do the same thing. This is very important to understand this, right? Get inside the actual Titan and then, or the Cuban, and the location or the multiple drops will spawn for you, okay? You're about to see that right now. I'm getting into the Titan. All right, so I know I have a buzzer there, but I'm going to use my Mark II. The drops, uh, they, they show up, and I can just look at them on the map. I'm going, to, I'm going to plan my route here. I'm going to start from the left and then work my way up, or vice versa. It doesn't matter either way. And what you want to do is you want to scout your drops. Get back into your Mark II or back on the, uh, the buzzer or whatever, and then you go scout your drops. Now, not every uh, Titan sale will have enemy choppers there, but if they do, they will be there. You can blow them up and take them out and you're good to go, all right? That's very important, you guys. Uh, you, need to, you need to know that. Don't fear that Titan sale. Just scout your drops. 
use that method and then you blow up the bad guys and then you're good to go and if you do have an issue so you get griefed or the game bugs out like it does sometimes just close the application and you only lose three crates load back up and then source those back real quick and just sell again and you're good to go if you want to you can skip the titan sale that way i don't recommend that though take the challenge master it that way you don't have to worry about wasting any time and you're set now there's a few more things I want to go over with you guys that are very important, all right? Uh, while you're running crates, there is something called unique crates or special cargo crates. And these are pretty cool because they give you triple, sometimes quadruple the amount of money that you pay for them and you get a lot of cash, all right? And with these, they work in a particular way. So if you are a first time player when it comes to CEO crates, you have to source 20 crates first and then you're good to go for the rest of your you know, crate sourcing, you know, career or whatever. But every 48 minutes, you will get a 10% chance where your assistant calls you and she'll be like, hey, listen, I have a great opportunity. It's going to cost more money, but you also get paid a lot more too. So be careful about just closing out those phone calls that she sends you because every 48 minutes, you have a 10% chance of getting a special or a rare crate. And those are really, really good because they pay out a lot of money. Another tip I want to give you guys is how you can identify how many sale vehicles you will have per the amount of crates you are trying to sell. All right, so if you're new to this and you're just not very sure and you're starting out, I get that. So up to nine crates will guarantee one vehicle. All right, up to 29 crates between 10 and 29 will give you two vehicles. And then from 29 on up, you will have three vehicles. So keep that in mind. And that is for small, medium, or large. That's how it works, okay? So understand that. That's very important, all right? Now, how much does each warehouse sell for, okay? If you have a small warehouse maxed out, fully loaded, that's going to sell for $240,000. A medium warehouse should be $735,000, and a large warehouse will sell for $2,220,000, all right? And basically, if you're sourcing at three crates uh, per run, we'll use a small warehouse, for example. If you're sourcing at three crates a run, that's 15 crates at six grand, and then it's one crate at 2000 So you're spending 92000 and then you're selling it for 240000 So you end up making a net profit of 148000 And you can fill up a small warehouse pretty quick, and I'd say about a half hour. Uh, maybe a little bit longer, just depending on how you know efficient you are with what you're doing. And it, it's the, the same concept applies for you know a medium warehouse and a large warehouse. A large warehouse is 111 crates. That's 666,000. And you subtract that from 2,220,000. And so you sell that guy for about 1.5 million and some change. Another question I get asked a lot is, Ty, can your crate warehouses be rated? And yes, they can. They can be raided, but I can tell you how to avoid the raids and you don't have to worry about them at all, all right? It's really simple with the crate warehouse. So for a small warehouse, once you get 12 crates or more, you can be raided and there is a raid timer. So at small warehouse, it's 12 crates and the raid timer is five hours. So if you are in the game for five hours and you don't do like a resupply mission or a, a contact mission or some kind of, you know, free mode work, that timer will count down and you can get raided. For a medium warehouse, it's 30 crates or more. So once you get 30 crates or more in a medium sized warehouse, that timer kicks off. You got five hours. Just make sure you do some kind, you know, a resupply mission or something like that or a contact mission, a race or whatever, and you're good to go. For a large warehouse, it's 78 crates or more. So once you get to 78 crates, now the timer is is you know counting down. It's a five-hour timer. So just make sure you're doing something else in the game. You're just not sitting there AFK because you can be raided. And there is a percentage on that. So that's how that works. So keep that in mind. And you guys can avoid those raids. And I mean, I've had uh, crate warehouses for you know, years now. I think I've only been raided like three or four times, knock on wood. So it's really not that big of a deal, but make sure you pay attention to them because you do lose products. I mean, almost no matter what, you're going to lose some amount of products with the crate. So, but good thing, you know, if, if you get to it in time, it's not that big of a deal. You can source those back and it is a very, very, uh, you know, manageable uh, raid situation. You don't have to worry about it too much. And as long as you follow these tactics and methods, you shouldn't even really get raided at all. Okay. So guys, I, this is a long video. I get it. There is a ton of info I gave you. I hope this helps out. 
I really do. I hope this, you know, I, I probably have missed something here or there. There's so many cool little tactics and tricks. If you guys have anything you want to add, leave it in the comments down below. This is what we're you know here for. We're here to help each other out. All right, so thank you all so much for coming out the video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for the ills and reels content in the game. Make sure you smash, I mean, smash that like button. And you guys stay dangerous, right? We'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Yeah.